Okay, everybody, we are going to learn how to renew shield. Take it away first. Now we're down to 50-50. We're going to renew our shield slowly. 100, and then head on over to renew our health slowly again, up to 100. So that's a pretty neat effect. We've got some Niagara effects in there. We've got the shield and health coming up. This trigger up here is just for testing purposes, so it brings us down 50 like that, not needed. And... Uh, that's pretty cool. I think it's a really neat effect. So I wanted to show you guys. Uh, remember that more tutorials come out every 25 subs. So subscribe if you want more. Let's learn how to do this. OK, we're inside UEFN now. And I'm just going to give you the quick layout of what's going on. We've got two platforms here, somewhere to indicate where we can get healed up. Uh, I've got a trigger just over here that takes off some of our health so that we can test this. But otherwise, this is it. We've got these two spots here. There's also a couple of triggers that live. They're underground at the moment with their Niagara effect. So here's one trigger and here's the other trigger. And these are just, as always, these are just things that make the thing happen. So triggers where if you step on it, something can happen. And so we're making the health effect happen. And the Niagara effects are just Niagara effects. They're, if you've used Niagara effects, you know what they are. Just a particle effect. And I'm just triggering those with the VFX spawn. Okay, so that is the setup inside of the game. Let's take a look at the verse code because that's where all the magic happens. Okay, so I've opened up my game manager and all of this stuff I've covered in other tutorials, so definitely check those out. There's a link in the description to take you to a beginner tutorial on Verse if you don't know what's going on here. So I'm just going to lay this out really quickly. We've got our editables, which uh, we have the shield trigger. So that's the trigger that you step on to get shield. The trigger to get health, health and shield remover trigger, which is the trigger that I step on that removes is 50% of my shield and 50% of my health. The shield effect, which is a VFX spawner, and the health effect, which is a VFX spawner. VFX spawners are very easy to use. You can attach a nag effect to them really easily and then just disable them and enable them. And then I've also, I also have to make them move because the Niagara effects will actually show up pre-game uh, and it's it's easiest just to move them out of the way. So I attach them to a blueprint, but that's not for this. I think I did a tutorial of that, so we won't cover that. So now we're down in the section of the code that the triggers set off when we go to walk around. So we've got to remove health and shield and that passes, all triggers pass in a questionable agent, so a possible agent. So we want to make sure that agent exists by going valid agent, you can call us whatever you want, colon equals agent question mark, because it's a question mark when it comes in. It might be an agent. In our case, we do know it's an agent, but we still have to do this anyways. And then we have to see if we can get the fort character from that agent. So we have to do an if statement. And then from there, we just set the shield and the health to 50. Uh, maximum is 100. Death is zero, you know, kind of idea. So 50 is midway. So all I'm doing is setting the shield and setting the health. And this is the easiest way to set a character's health and shield. You can also get their health and shield, which we'll cover in a second. Okay, so the shield trigger and the health trigger, which is down here a little bit further, is exactly the same thing. We're going to check to see if the agent is real. If it is, we're going to spawn a thread that is going to do our healing. And we're spawning because we need to do a pause on how we heal up. Because this is a little bit more of a spiffier one. We're not just setting the shield and the health like we do lower with the first trigger. While well, you can do that, it's instantaneous. I think it's cooler if it looks like it's happening over a period of time. So we're sort of faking that in a way by having the spawn called, which makes a new thread. Cover this in other tutorials as well. And then we go through a loop and sleep during that loop so that it pauses. Sleeping is for pausing. So let's just look at one of them because they're both exactly the same. So if we, this one for the shield trigger calls start shield renewal passing in the actual agent. So the start shield renewal is our own function. We pass in the agent is it suspends because we're going to call sleep in it. All of this code is the key code for having a delay put on healing up. So let's explain it. The health thing is exactly the same other than we're setting the health and getting the health. Nothing different. So we'll only go over one of them. So I've set up a variable called renewal tick, and this is going to go up for every time we come out of sleep and sleep is set separately. I'll talk about that in a sec. We're going to enable the shield effect, which is the Niagara effect that runs off of the VFX spawner. And we're going to set the current shield value to zero because we want to get the amount of shield the user has. And then we're going to divide that by how many ticks we have set to have this happen. Renewal tick is set to one and we're going to count upwards from there. And we're going to see about if we take a look here, renewal time. So the renewal time is how long we want to spend renewing somebody's shield or health. And I've set that way up here to three. So that's going to be three seconds. So tick, tick, 
tick is what's going to happen. When you go to sleep, the renewal tick, we enable the VFX. Uh, we set a default value for the how much shield a character has to zero. And then we go get it by making sure we get the fort character from the agent. And we have to use if because it might not be able to find it. And then we're going to set the current shield to the character's get shield amount. So if they have 50, then current shield is going to be equal 50.0 because it's a float. Now we go into our loop. Now our loop is what's going to do a calculation to find out how much shield we have, divide that by the renewal time, which we sent to three, and then we're going to tick through it and add one third, in this case, of the remaining amount of shield required overall. It goes up. So say, for example, you had 70 shield and you divide that by three, it's 10. So it's going to go up 10, another 10, another 10, and it'll reach 100, right? So let's do that. So the amount to renew per tick is a float. We're going to 100 minus the current shield divided by the renewal time. So if you change the renewal time up here to say something like 10, some really big number, then the effect is going to go on for a much longer time because it's going to go on for 10 seconds and it's going to slowly creep its way upwards. So I just put it to three to make it quicker. So then we want to find out how much shield to add on, but you can't add on. You have to set the shield to something. What we're going to do is we're again, we're going to use that renewal tick time, which is one at this point in time. The amount to renew per tick is set up here. We multiply those and add the current shield, which is the original shield amount. We're not re-getting that. And then we grab the character again. We set their shield to be that amount. And then we update the renewal tick to plus one. That will allow us to break out of this loop after the amount of times, which is the renewal time that we have set. And then we just sleep for the set amount of time that we put in or renewal speed, which is in this case one. So you can also set how fast it's going to renew up here in essentially what is a global variable to slower or faster. So every time it goes to sleep, it'll go to sleep for one, or you can have it sleep for 10, which will take absolutely forever for something to uh, renew, or you can make it really, really fast. It'll just go through its loop really quickly. In this case, I'm having it go through every second. That's the end of it. If you wanted to make this simpler and not do these calculations, you could walk into this shield thing and then just set the shield character set shield to 100 if you want to do that. But I thought it'd be kind of cool to have a little bit of an effect to it so that it goes up slowly uh, rather than then immediately. Anyways, hopefully that's kind of interesting. It's the end of this one. I'll see you guys in the next one.